Hey there, Brent here once again. Time to finish it off with this box set. So I've got here my final prints at this stage. Again, I'm still not sure that it's completely final because I have one more trip where I'm gonna be going to Alaska and we'll see what happens there. But I do have the prints ready to go into the box. And so let's kind of, um, let's refocus on the box and we'll see where we're going with this and, and what we gotta do here. So I'm using this archival photo box from Kansas Infinity and let's kind of just open it up and see what we've got. And then also my goal is to create some kind of label type item that sort of is like what we got going on here, except it's gonna of course have my stuff on it, my pictures and, and all that other good stuff. So we will replace this sleeve with something else, although it won't be a full on sleeve. And when we open the box, we, let's see, I guess I'm kind of glad it's it's a challenge to open. It'll protect the prints well. When we open the box, let's take a look what we've got. We've got this nice ribbon here. And so the ribbon is going to, basically that is affixed to the box. So that's going to be the aid in getting everything out of the box. So that's kind of cool. So we've got this overlay sheet here. And then we've got these glassine sheets that are going to be the interleaving sheets. And so these will go, what I'm going to do is these are going to go basically in between each sheet. And then we're going to be able to just have that protective, you know, layer going between each one and we'll be able to, uh, keep the prints hopefully in a better state rather than just throwing all the prints in there. And it's kind of interesting. These sheets are in their own little envelope. So I like that because I'm not going to use all of these sheets for this box set, but I'll be able to keep them and keep them in good order because they're in their own little envelope. So that's kind of nice. I appreciate that. So let's look at the size of this box. I ordered the letter size box and we can see how much bigger than the print that is. And that's nice too, to have it slightly oversized. And so what I want to have happen is I'm going to create this, this overprint, this vellum overprint item that's going to come across there. And so I've got a nice grid here on the table so I can look at it and say, okay, this is about nine inches wide. And it is about an inch and a half tall. So when I add nine and then I do an inch and a half, inch and a half, that's uh, going to be three inches. And then I'm going to have it wrap up and around and it's going to stick on the inside of the lid here. So that's really adding six inches. So nine plus six inches is 15 inches. And then I just have to think how tall do I want this to be? So as long as I can get a 15 inch item that wraps around, then we're going to be good to go. So let's hop in the computer now and put all the final touches on this. I'm going to show you the items in InDesign where I've laid out the interleaving sheets idea. And then we're going to bring it all together with the overall wraparound that's going to go on the cover on the outside of the box as well. We'll get those printed and then we'll put them all in the box and we'll be ready to go. And that'll be it. It'll be complete. What we're looking at here is the InDesign new document dialog box. And I'll go ahead and hit the simple print preset they got here. We're going to go with a letter size. And since most of my images are horizontal, I'm going to choose a horizontal layout. I'm not going to choose facing pages and I don't see a reason to assign a gutter at this point because I'm looking for something ultra simple, ultra boiled down, not a big deal. Um, I might go ahead and make these an inch for the margins. Actually, let's be a little different. Let's do uh, 0.875. And then for bleed and such, there's no need for a bleed or a slug. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. So let's go ahead and hit create. And we have our document. So I'm going to put some things on the master page. So then when I do a new page, it will always be there, the same design, same position. And then I can just type it in with the, the new information. So I really want to go super simple on these. I'm just going to drag an image in from the finder. And when I do that, you know, I can then click and drag and place an image. Now I do have my smart 
guides active. And so with that, you would go to, uh, what is it, view, and then grids and guides and smart guides. And you can see the keyboard shortcut is command U. All right, so that's probably a decent size. Let's take a look at it. It is almost two inches tall and almost three inches wide. Let's go ahead and just make that three inches wide. So I'm gonna anchor it on the top and the middle. And then I'm gonna go uh, three inches here. And then when I am looking at that, it's like, okay, okay, I, I've resized the box, but I haven't resized the content. So let's go ahead and take a look at these items over here. So we have fit content proportionally. Well, that's not really what I want. I wanna fill the frame proportionally. So here's what I want. It's gonna make it bigger, but it's gonna crop it, right? And we again, we anchored it at the top still, so it should have pushed it down. So if I hit this middle thing, it then gives me, we can see it pushed it up and down a little bit. So, oh well, no big deal. So let's take a look at these other items. Fit content to frame, nope. Fit frame to content, yes, that's what we want. And now we have the three inch sized item and now I've drug it down so it aligns with my 0.875 inch margin right there. All right, so let's now grab ourselves a text box and we're going to put in, uh, we're gonna call it photograph title. And I'll go ahead and center that because this is just gonna be super duper uber simple. And then I'm gonna put in my copyright information. Well, maybe I'll do that separately on the bottom because I want that to be consistent in every every item. So whereas the, the story about the photograph may be a longer story, a shorter story, I just wanna give a tidbit of information about the photograph. And then I plan on signing each and every one of these as well. But what I'm just looking for something to, I can communicate to the to the purchaser the basic idea, the basic story of the photograph and what we're looking at here. So I'll go ahead and create a line that is going along that bottom margin. And then I'm going to make this about a 0.5 point line. It is black. Actually, yes, the stroke is black, so we should be good. Now we can't really see it because it's so small. If I hit the W key, it'll change the preview and then we can see only the stuff on the page, not the margins and guides and other stuff like that. So that's coming across okay. And I'm gonna go ahead now and I'll copy this. I'm gonna click and drag, hold option, and then hold shift to lock it into the direction that I'm dragging it. And let us go now I could have, I guess, done a paragraph rule. Oh well, I'm not gonna get too picky here. Uh, just for ease of simplicity, I wanna leave it aligned with this, but of course if I do that, then that's touching. That just looks hideous. So I hit that, I do Command B, and then I can increase my inset spacing. Let's do an eighth of an inch. And now let's go copyright my name. And now it's time to set the fonts that I use for everything. I probably could have, should have done that earlier, but oh well. And I usually, on something like this, I wanna go extra light. I'm just gonna make it nice and unobtrusive. Alrighty then, so we'll do extra light on the title, but this time we're gonna be obtrusive. And so we're gonna go maybe, we'll start with 72, that's about an inch tall. Um, yeah, that's probably gonna be fine. I don't see a problem with that, maybe slightly less. So let's try 64, okay. And so you can see with this item down here, we definitely have to work with that. So let's get the font right first. And I usually just go with something like book, that's a standard approach on the font. And what we're looking at, why it's so crowded, something went on here, let's see, we've got the full on deal there. All right, let's just hit this and add a whole bunch of letting. I wanna draw this down. Actually, I really don't want a whole lot of letting because when I do more to the story and I do a soft return, this is gonna look like that. And I really don't want it looking like that. So let's modify this. I'm gonna go probably with 14 point type here. And then the standard 
for auto is 120% of that, and that looks fine, but I think we're gonna try 18 on this. I still need to push that down. So we're gonna go to paragraph, and then we're gonna add some space above the paragraph. There we go, so we'll have it start there. And now if I do another paragraph, I have that same amount of space. Whereas if I don't do another paragraph, if I can spell right, then we then we just have it coming in with our normal letting. So I think we're going to run with that, and we'll just have something ultra super simple. And the point here is it's going to go in with each photograph. So this is going to separate each photograph from the others. And so we have an idea about the story of the photo. You know, I can even, since I'm going to print this on my inkjet printer, I can even do really good, let's see here, about taking the color. Well, let's just go to swatches, actually. Maybe take this down to like 60% gray and get a little extra, you know, sophisticated kind of a thing going on here. But so I'm going to be able to then just dump in each photo uh, right away. And let's go see how that happens. And then we'll continue on with the titles and all sorts of things like that. So let's get on the real page now. And let's let's create a whole bunch of these because, you know, we've got currently, what is it, 12 in the whole in the whole set. And so, um, you know, for this one, I could always just leave it. And then if I had it, the, the photograph title, um, you know, whatever this is. So um, I don't know that this is going to be the actual final title, but maybe it's Upper Falls number two. And then I tell a little bit about the story. I'm not going to bore you with that in this recording. But then let's go ahead and jump on over to this one. In order to pick up this element, I got to hit shift and command and then click and then I've got that element and then I just need to go command D and then we got to go of course find it it's going to be in print files and then the next one down the line oh let's let's do date modified so I can just go down the line from last to first so here it is it actually picked up the the sizing of the image. So we can see when I, let's see, when I click on this item and then I click on the detail. So I'm clicking on the frame. Now let's click on the, the content of the frame. As you we can see, it came in at 30% of the, of the original size. So I'm just picking up the print file that I just literally printed out on the really nice paper. When this, since this is just a division paper kind of an idea, I'm not so concerned about this being absolutely perfectly set for the sharpening and all that stuff. It's going to be a nice representation and that's all I need it to be. And then, you know, we can just go from there. So then shift, command, shift and click. Oops, this is number one then because this one was number two. So this is number one. And so then we can just continue it on through and complete the whole thing. So We'll jump back in after I've done everything, after I've written the stories and all that good stuff. We'll come back at it with a final look at how this is going to happen. And then we'll also look at the printing aspect of it as well. So here we are in InDesign and I've finalized the text that I'm going to do for all of these different interleaving sheets. And let's take a quick look in our pages panel here. So we can see I've got all the different pages lined up. I've got a total of 11. So they're all done here. Now with this one, since it's a vertical image, I decided to rotate the view so I can design it vertically. And just a quick note on that, you can see this item here, we have this little, little icon suggesting it's been rotated. So when you select on this particular, particular spread, as they call it, and then you go to uh, right click on it, and then we look at page attributes and then we just come on over here to rotate spread view and then we select one of these 90 degree options and then you just make it happen so we can clear the rotation and it'll look like a normal page and so then it's like that it doesn't really matter this is how InDesign views it it's just I rotated the preview of it so I don't have to cock my head as I'm trying to read this and all that other stuff since I'm ready for production I'll just leave it like this and let it ride so let's take a look now at creating that item that's going to go on the cover. So what we're looking for here, I'm going to go print and tabloid because the parent sheet that I'll be printing to is actually 11 by 17 inches. And then we're going to 
um, probably make my, my life a little bit easy. If we were to take our margins and just go uh, to a full inch, remember I said on the measurement that I needed to be 15 inches across. So I'm just going to make my margin an inch on either side, and that'll take off two inches total. So we'll be good to go with that. And then if I were to, uh, let's take off facing pages, take off the link. And when I go top and bottom, I can start to think, you know, how big do I really want this thing? Do I want it to be 11 inches tall? Absolutely not. That's the height of the whole box or just about. And so I probably want to go in the neighborhood of maybe four and a half inches. So I could adjust some items here, but I'll just make that in the box itself because I'll be able to get two items per sheet. Oh, let's go horizontal on this as well. So I'll be able to get two items per sheet on here actually is what I'm going to end up running with this. So I'm going to go for a box that I can drag out here. And really, I guess if I just want to make my life easy, I could come down here and say, okay, how much is this? Okay, nine and a half. Yeah, half of that is going to be four and a half. So I can just come up here and then type it in 4.5. And then if I give myself a little bit of a stroke, so let's go like 0.25, I'm going to be able to follow that as I cut. So I'm thinking about production, you know, as, as I get, as I move through and I'm thinking about making this happen. Uh, let's go ahead and provide this. You know, I don't like that X in the background, so I do the wrong one. I'm going to draw this other type that is just a straight rectangle, whereas this one is what they're calling rectangle frame tool. This one's just a rectangle tool. So let's get rid of the rectangle frame and let's just create one of these. Now we can also go 15 by 4.5. And since I had it anchored in the center over here, it's not coming up right, but whatevs. Let's do this. Give ourselves a black and 0.25. And then we'll run it over here. All right, there's we have it. Now I could have also just done the text box with a stroke, but since I'm going to have probably multiple text boxes, I'm going to not really worry about that. Notice how the the icon changes when I'm in the item versus when I'm outside the item. That's going to change the item to a text box. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep it separate. And let's actually get on the hit the W key so I can literally just see that item there. I can also click this and I can hit Command L and lock it so I don't accidentally move it around or whatever. So now I need to think about what am I going to put here? Um, certainly I need to put my name and the like, but do I want to say a box set really big? Or my name really big? Do I want to, really what I want to do is just be nice and subtle and svelte and you know, whatever else. I don't want to knock things out of the park and, and be obtuse. So I'll just go with my name and do something like uh, 2019 boxed set and then I feel since I'm going to have a, a different a difference in the box set I want to um, I want to articulate the fact that this is my custom crops rather than the 8x10 crops so I think I'll go ahead and put a pipe here and then say custom crops or something like that. And I may change, you know, this is all a work in process, work progress, if you want to call it. And so I may change things up. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. I, I try not to be too picky about these things when I'm just sketching things out. And I really am just getting the ideas out there. I'm going to hit Command B, and I'm going to vertically uh, or center this item. And now let's change this to my standard everything font, because I just love this font. Verlag, and with that idea of going, you know, super, super lightweight on things, and then we will come here and add a bunch of space before the paragraph, and 12 point, I'm sure, is just fine there, and, you know, maybe I want to make 2019 boxed set really big. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unlock this item. So I need to go up here to objects, um, unlock all on spread. That's fine. And then I'm going to copy this down here and let's just change this up and let's just see what we like. 
does it make more sense to have my name small? Uh, you know, maybe Brent Burkham, photographer or something like that. Uh, I can even have photographer. I could joke about it. But I think that's not going to be fun. And let's make it small caps, maybe. And then we can play with the tracking. So I'm not, where's my, here's my tracking. So it evens out. You know, this is a very, I've seen this kind of look so many times, though. And I'm trying to do something that won't be so cliche, I guess, is the, the only word I can think of. Um, you know, maybe the fact that that was in black actually helped matters. And so what if I were to do a black band like that, but I have to send it back. So I'll actually, I'll leave that there for now. And I'll just make it a black background. And then I'll bring this to front because I assigned white to this element here. So I'll bring this to front, command shift, right bracket. We'll bring this forward. And now that I have selected that, I can make just that white. And that's not too bad, I suppose. I wonder if I should bring in, I definitely should bring in my, my standard logo. So let me go hunt for that. So I've got the logo here loaded, ready to go. And so if I were to just click and drag, I can determine the size for how big I want it to be. And so I'm going to hold Shift and Command to click and drag this down to size. The command also grabs the content of the box, not just the box. And the Shift holds it into proportions. And then uh, we need to bring the text back up again. And as I click through, I'm going to hold command to click through underneath the text box. And so I can kind of make that happen there. Um, let's go ahead and make this my standard blue color. And if I change this to RGB, I'll get my hex value. And that's what I know it by. I don't know it by anything other because I do so much more on the web. And so there's my hex value. So we'll run with that and put that in there. And so now I've got my blue color on there, which is nice to have. And let's maybe scooch that up a little bit. And I might go custom crop sizing. Maybe, maybe that makes sense. Or maybe it makes sense to put this on a different line. But now what I want to do is get rid of this, go with zero. And let's drop this down to like eight point size and maybe lift the letting just a hair. And now with that, we want to move this about. I'm going to make this a little narrower so it doesn't run into that G. And you know, another thing I can do, let's delete all this. Let's make another copy here. There we go. That might work. That might make sense, right? And then I can just get rid of, let's see, I might want to keep that spacing. So I'll just retype it. Move that down with my arrow. Not terrible, I don't think. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, let's let's take this down in size a little bit. I think this is just a little bit too big. And we'll increase our letting to push the text up a little bit. The the my name. 
Here we go. And then I'll probably pull this down to about 50%. And then I'm tempted to screen the hat back some too. And with that one, I need to go into my appearance panel and I don't see it here. So I go over here to window. Is it appearance or is it effects actually? I think it's effects. And take the opacity down to about maybe 60%. I think in Illustrator it's appearance. So anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I like this better where we have 2019 boxed set here rather than just Brent Bergen photographer. I, I just, I don't know. I just, that just feels too cliche to me to say the word photographer itself. And do I still have the tracking on this? I do. So let's take a look and make sure I like the tracking or not. What's best here uh, to have a normal set isn't bad. What if also we take this and go a little bit thicker on that font? I think that's nice. Yes, I do like that. So let's run with that. And let's grab ourselves two copies. And let's continue on with production. So I've got this tabloid size, or 11 by 17 paper that I'm gonna be printing on. That's what the cover will be printed on and I can get two pieces as you can see it here. Then I'll just use these as items to follow for cutting. And then when we run with these, I'm going to actually use InDesign to put two of these on each sheet. I was gonna print on the glassine sheets. I just wanted to see if I could do it and the printer handles it, those glassine sheets that came with the box. But because of the waxiness of the coating, the ink just bleeds like crazy. If you touch it and smear it, it prints out looking really nice actually, but you touch it and it's gonna smear like crazy. And since that is unacceptable, I'm gonna go with printing on this nice vellum that I have for these. So let's use InDesign to make this happen two per page. So we're gonna try out this print booklet option and we're gonna definitely be going on the Canon Pro Series 2. That's the thing I've been printing on this whole time. Let's look at this preview. Uh, so it wants to give me a blank page there. Let's, let's take a look at our print settings and page setup. That's why we were on letter there. Let's get ourselves on tabloid. Um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna tell it we're just gonna use plain paper. There it is. We've got a preview going on of, of what we're looking at here. And we need to rotate those somehow. So here's what we're gonna end up doing. I think we're gonna go back into page settings and let's try this one out here. And see what it, what it wants to do, it wants to put it, <laughs> it wants to spread it across the wrong way. Oh, this is so frustrating. Why can't it do it? All right, so it's it's not putting it down here for some reason. So saddle stitch. So basically, if I had designed these individual pages to be vertical instead of horizontal, this totally would have worked because then those would totally fit on with what we're looking for. But because I didn't do that, it's forcing the the horizontal width. It's not allowing me to do what I want to do with this. So I'm sorry for the confusion here, but I did have to make a change on how this whole thing was set up. Originally, these items were horizontal pages and now I've switched them technically to vertical pages. So as I look over here at the pages item, we can see that they are vertical and how the text is you know, going on its end. And then we have all these little rotated items here bringing it to view so I can just design it normally and I can look at it normally here in the view. And then we get all the way down at the end and of course I left that one just fine. I needed to do it this way so it would work with the printing the booklet function. You can save yourself a whole lot of time just by getting letter size vellum and not having to worry about this at all. So let's jump back into the regularly recorded section where I'm just taking you through the production side of this and making it all happen. 
So with the boxes, they actually came with these glassine sheets and they have this little waxy coating on them. So I was a little nervous thinking, I'm probably not gonna be able to print on these. The printer actually handles it really well, but the ink, once you touch it, it will smudge and smear and that's just not gonna work. So I'm going to put the interleaving sheets on this same acid-free vellum that I have, but it's 11 by 17 and I want to use the sheets and only cut it once and use the sheets efficiently, effectively. So here's what I've ended up doing. I've got the layout on a technically vertical page. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, this one is a quote normal page, right? And so these others are technically not horizontal, they are vertical. So let's go to this last one and we can see here what I've done. I got go down to page attributes, rotate spread view, clear rotation. This is literally what it, this is literally what it looks like when it's being laid out and how InDesign interprets or is handling or managing the page. But if I want to look at it normally, so I don't have to worry about cocking my head when I'm editing anything, I do this and everything comes out fine. The reason I need to do this, it seems kind of weird, but the reason I need to do this is because I want to print two pieces on each physical paper, physical sheet of paper. And when I do that, I'm going to use the booklet function for InDesign, and it's the print booklet here. And first thing I want to do is change this down here. I'm going to go to two up consecutive. So it's just going to give me two per sheet of paper, and it's just going to run them consecutively. So let's run that with that. And then I'm certainly on the right paper, the right printer, I should say. And let's double check our print settings here. And I go to page setup, and I created, in testing some things out, I created my own uh, sheet 17 by 11. Let's see if the standard tabloid works because if any chance I can use the standard stuff, I'm going to use the standard stuff. So let's just run with that. Uh, check our setup. Everything is just, you know, super normal. I'm going to run here to printer. Going to make sure I'm still on plain paper because this is just super plain paper. It is a cotton vellum, but still, I'm going to treat it as plain paper for this purpose. And then I hit that and then, oh, it, here I, I in, introduced myself some kind of error. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, it didn't like what's going on with, with how the layout is happening. So pretty sure I can fix that by simply coming here and saying do this. So let's run with this. And now we have it coming in exactly as we need it. So we've got one right on top of the other and it's just looking really good. It's going to be... Uh, you know, a total of six pages it looks like, because I've got 11 in total. And so it's gonna come out and then there will be a, what they consider a blank page. So this is perfect. I love how this is coming through. And then I have one cut to do right down the center and I've got a cutter that will allow me to do that. So it's gonna be really easy in the production side of things. So let's get these things printed and then let's get to final production back there on the table. So to get these things printed, what I'm looking at is using this vellum paper. It is an acid-free paper, 100% cotton rag for tracing. And it just gives a really nice feel. Here's a sample where I printed only one of them on the sheet, but a nice sample and you can see how it's a little bit translucent. I really love the feel that this is gonna give. And it's just gonna, I think, be super classy and feel really nice. I just gotta get it out of the, out of the pad here and into the printer. One thing I should probably say about this type of printer that if you have this type of printer you already know, I'm sure, it takes forever to change an ink cartridge. And I sat here probably just five minutes waiting for this thing to change. Let's let it finish printing and then we'll take a look afterwards and, and get this thing wrapped up. All right, there we have it. We've got the cover items printed and each of the interleaving sheets printed. Now let's get things rearranged on the table so we can finish this off and have the final proof, I guess I could say, of this box set. All right, so just really quickly before we trim these out, this is the original glassine sheet that came out of the 
box. And so you can see here, I've got this little bit of a smudge when I ran my finger over it right after printing. That's what it gave me. As it's dry now, I do it. It's a lot less, but that's still something I didn't want to risk happening uh, as we go. You know, could be maybe you're down the line where the ink just starts to come off because it's reacting with this wax or whatever. So I decided not to go that route. And we're going to go this route with this vellum. So I've got this paper trimmer here and then a trash can just off the edge. And it's really nice because it's got this little extra measuring device. So when I'm dealing with these sheets here, all I have to do is slide that through. All I have to do is line this up with eight and a half and we'll, I'll get it down here on the bottom, line it up with eight and a half. And I know that I've got a perfect, a perfect size image. That's perfectly letter size. Both of them, the one that fell off and this one is perfectly letter size. So there we have it. It's going to be perfectly trimmed. Now I do need to trim off the rough edge on these top ones. So those will be ever so slightly less of the eight and a half inches. I guess technically that'll be eight and a half inches. This one will be slightly less than eight and a half inches. But I can easily split the difference as well and just go like so. Uh oh, then I run into things like that where it's not cutting perfectly because I didn't push down on the blade. There we go. And then look, thankfully this is still a proof because photograph title, I kind of messed up. The trimmer isn't long enough to do the length. So I'm going to have to do that by hand. All right, so as far as how I want to place this thing, I want to probably put it pretty much like that. And so here's my tape that I'm going to use to mount it on the inside. It's an inch wide. We tend to call it banner tape. That's just what I, what I know it as uh, because of my previous job as a sign shop manager. But I will cut a piece. It's roughly the size that I need there. And this stuff is just super, super sticky double-sided tape. So sticky, it doesn't want to come off the backing. All right, so let's make sure I get this going right. So if I do this and flip it over that way, that means this is going to come up around here and go into that side there. So then I'll just take this. And fix that right there. Fold it around the edge. I'm going to provide a good amount of tension as I'm pulling this over. because I want that to be nice and tight and flat. And then I just seal it there that way. There we go. Ah, good thing this is a proof box. It's a little higher than I want it to be, but I, I can live with it for a proof box. All right, so now these images are basically in reverse order right now. So I'll just put the photograph in. And I suppose I should sign these photographs. Again, this is a proof box. So the ones that I send out are going to be signed. 
and then just put in these sheets. And it looks like I'm missing a print. So I'll get that one going. All right, there we are. All right, so there we have finally the finished product. This is just a proof box. This did end up being a little higher than I would like it. What I'll probably do, what I know I will do for my final pieces, I'm going to measure and be able to be very precise as to where exactly I want that item to start. And then it'll be a nice band that goes around the box. And so as we open it up, of course, we just have then this ribbon to pull it out with and get it started. I'll get this sequenced exactly how I want it sequenced as well. It's mostly how I want it sequenced, but I did for some reason on this, the final rendition of this proof, the, the print for the North Platte River image with the tree, um, that went somewhere else. It got into a different stack apparently. And so I'll be getting that going and getting it in here. And one last note too, this being a proof, again, I don't know exactly are these going to be the final images that we, that make it to the final production boxes? I have a feeling that 90% of these images will, but as I continue shooting and finishing out the year, I'm ready to go and I can very easily and quickly incorporate other images, swap things out, and I've got my files ready. And then when I do this next year, it'll be so easy to just take the template from this year and dump the information in for next year's box set. So let me know if you have any questions. Please reach out to me on the website, brentbergherm.com, or take a look over there at my podcast, latitudephotographypodcast.com. Give that a listen as well. I'm covering some of these details there in the audio-only format if that interests you, plus so much more with interviews with really interesting industry leaders and other things related to travel and outdoor photography. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you being here. I look forward to your feedback and your questions. Let me know what you got. Until next time, happy shooting.